compared to the suburbs, my hood is a hell full of flames of violence. Compared to my hood's past, my hood is heaven. My hood is getting better. My hood is starting to educate themselves. My hood is starting to become in touch with their inner peace. But no matter how hard they try, they will never be as deep as the potholes in my hood. It is a really long process for us to get youth to understand that they have a voice and that that voice matters. And so I've been challenged to really think more about how to create spaces that are brave for young people. And perhaps we can find safety within the context of the bravery that it takes to express your truth and to hear the truth of others. We go into different schools and we provide literary arts instruction, usually in poetry and performance. Once we work with the youth in the schools, we then hopefully bring some of them to us here at 12 Literary Arts. And so they become a part of our after-school program called the One Mic Open After School Poetry Fellowship. 12 makes you go like really in depth with everything. 12 is an amazing place and it really has helped me develop myself as a writer. And I'm most definitely looking forward to continuing with them throughout this program. When I was a teenager, music saved my life. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't had access to guitar and guitar lessons. I found that many, many kids in the city of Cleveland don't have this opportunity. And that just wasn't okay with me. The Cleveland Classical Guitar Society is a nonprofit organization dedicated to education and concerts within the city of Cleveland. We have an education program that's dedicated to creating life-changing experiences for Cleveland's kids. Your voices need to be heard. And this is a good um, conduit, good outlet. Sisterhood is an after-school and summer program for girls ages 10 to 18. It focuses on literacy. We help a lot with uh, social skills and self-esteem. Essentially, it's an um, empowerment program for girls. I want them to feel proud of being a girl of color. I want them to be proud of being a woman and to, of being female. Literacy is a, a huge problem or issue within the city of Cleveland, so I want the girls to be able to be advanced in, in that area. I also want them to see that they can write about their own story, they can write about their situation, they can write about their experience. They can learn a lot about the world through books and through writing. This empowering program, this program is telling these girls that they can do whatever they want to do, being completely honest with all of them, not hesitating to tell you when you're wrong, tell you when you're not doing something right. It's like, it's like something that some people never experience and that's what they need. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get more kids more involved in arts and humanities by showing them object-based learning tactics and ins and outs of the museum. They're putting together, thinking about narrative and thinking about time that I think is very intriguing. And this is from high school students. So we took them into object conservation and showed them the lab where it happens. I think it's really interesting to see the space, the equipment they develop specifically for those objects. But I think even better, they were broken into small groups and they were able to each have their own object. One person in the group was designated to actually physically handle it. They would record the details of what they saw. Nothing, nothing beats that close looking. I think it's an incredibly electrifying sort of way to learn about a work of art. Kids 14 through 18, I really don't know how they want to experience the museum. Me personally, I don't know how they take it in. I don't know if they think the colors here are boring or you know how they want this place to be. And they're gonna be the ones that are future conservators or future curators. I think it's helpful because it just gives us a jump start on getting it closer to what we should have it to in the future. The main thing that we're talking about today is redlining and how the aspects of how the government made a way to not invest in certain areas, which led to even now it being very, they don't want to call it discrimination, but that's what it is. Wow, like I've been in this predicament my whole life. How did I not know about it? I know I'm gonna do a whole lot of poetry about this here moment. 
I can legit create a headspace for people to think about it, not on a surface level, but on a, on a deeper level. She's like a mother figure to me because I could talk to Miss Allie about stuff and um, she teaches me to be more responsible and to not be like, have an attitude so quickly and be disrespectful. And she taught me to love books more than I used to. And um, without her, like the program wouldn't be what it is now. I like to say something to Miss Allie because she was like a mother figure to me and she helped me through a lot of things that happened. Cause like, I'm a better person because I came here because she wanted to do an after school program at Booker. I decided to stay and go to the summer program and here now. So like the things that she teaches me just makes me a better person every day. <laughs> Ever since the guitar came in my life, it was, it just, things got different. It just, I had I found out who who I was. Anytime like there's something going on at the school where there's a dad or involved, like the dad like we're gonna walk your child to school today or something like that. Like anytime like instead of, instead of being like oh wow I don't have one of those, I think of Mr. Man and Mr. G. So I wanted to thank y'all for that because y'all make life a lot better and y'all help in a lot more ways than y'all probably know. I think more programs like 12 would build a stronger community. I think it would help, especially in our community. It would help bring, you know, the kids together. Basically throughout 12, I came up into confidence and I came uh, upon my own ability to lead and my own ability to step in front of a crowd and speak my own mind, not to read somebody else's words, but to read my own. Last year, my cousin unfortunately um, was killed. If it was not for 12, I probably, like, I would have probably shut down um, and grieved for much longer because 12 gave me the tools to express that grief and write it down and make it productive, basically, and make it in a way where I can use my words to tell his story, tell my story, and empower other people who lose family members in such a way. Watching her perform that poem about my nephew was very hard. She didn't tell me she had even written one. And I found it, and it tore me up. And But I didn't think she was going to perform it because she like took it and hid it and everything. So when she did perform it, it was very uh, emotional. It was emotional because it's been hard. It was a cool fall day when death cradled my cousin in his arms and didn't release him. Cradled him despite his crimson palms held him when his mama couldn't, clutched onto my cousin while my cousin clutched onto life. I wonder sometimes if my cousin knew what was coming. Felt the end near in the marrow of his bones in the innermost part of being, as if a black cat of doom dusted his ankles with bad omens, great times, nightmares. A grim foreshadowing of a dead end, an everlasting curse of umbrellas in the house because now it only rains inside. Mm -hmm. 